Hey guys, welcome back to Code Realm. In this next video series, we're going to explore React Router v4. And I'm going to explain a lot of the new concepts in the next version of React Router. But we're going to start by creating a simple application. And it's going to be a blog about writers. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to open up a terminal. And let me navigate to my folder here in the workspace, React, and then Code Realm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new application with Create React App. And we're going to call it writer's blog. Now once the installation is done, I'd like to install React Router. So if you go back to the browser and you navigate to React documentation on GitHub, and if you scroll down, you're going to see a table over here that basically lists a few different packages that relate to React Router. So the first one, as you see, is the core of the React Router. The second one is the one that we're actually going to install. So this is going to be React Router DOM. And this one is going to create DOM bindings for React Router. But there's also one for React Native, and obviously it's going to be React Router Native, and that one is going to create React Native bindings for the router. Both of them still use React Router at the core, so the one and only package that we need to install is React Router DOM because we're building a web application here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do yarn add React Router DOM, and behind the scenes, this is actually going to install React Router as well. So I'm going to navigate to that project here, Router's blog. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. And then next, let's also clean up the structure over here. So we're going to need to delete some of the files over here because we're not actually going to use them. Things like logo or the CSS files because we're really not interested in them. The same for some of the tests here. So in the end, we're just going to end up with a simple index.js file. And I'm going to delete all of the other references as well. So we're just going to have the app component and it's going to be mounted to the DOM with React DOM. I'm going to save that. I'm going to also remove all of the semicolons as I always do. And then I'll go to app.js and then here we can basically remove pretty much most of it. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an export default of a function. In fact, let's keep it as a class. We're going to have a class that extends a component. The reason I'd like to keep it as a class is because the app component is going to be the only stateful component in our application. It's going to hold all of the state for the application. So this is going to extend the component, of course. And then inside of it, we're going to have the render function that returns. Well, for now, let's just simply return a div, I guess. So we're going to have a div and I'm going to cut that based inside of the new class and then remove all the other stuff as well. So we're not going to have any logo anymore, same for CSS. And then I'll just kill the semicolon at the end. So that's pretty much it. We're going to build out our application from this point on. Now let's go back to the terminal and let's actually start the application. So I'm going to run yarn start. And that should open up the browser for us. And we should basically see a blank page. And if we inspect the DOM, we're only expecting to see a single div in the root. And that's basically what we have in app.js. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a state. So like I said, this is going to be the only stateful component in the application. So in this state, I'd like to create a reference to the writers, of course. And like I said, we're building a simple blog application. So what I'd like to do actually is to basically display a list of names of different writers. And so the user will be able to navigate to this page and then click on the names of different writers and then navigate to the details page of those writers. And this is where React Router will actually come into play. And this is actually the point where we need to decide how we're going to handle the store, or basically the data store for the application. So in my previous video series about material UI, I've actually created a store.js file inside of the project. And then we've put several exports inside of it, where we basically define the initial data set for the application. We're going to go with a similar approach, except we're actually going to rely on a server. So we're going to be making Ajax call from within the application to that server. Now, of course, if you need to set up a server, you would need to create an, a separate application for that server, right? So we could use something like Node.js with Express for that, or we could use Rails, or we could use Python's Django or anything like that. But for this simple demo, there's actually a really fantastic package that I came across recently, and it's known as JSON Server. So what JSON Server allows you to do is create a RESTful API with basically no configuration whatsoever up front, and it allows you to create a server that is based on a file. So imagine that you have a file called db.json, where you basically define a list of data entries that contain all of the data items. So for example, posts, comments, it could be users, it could be anything basically. 
And then once you run the JSON server, it'll read from that file and then spin up a Node.js server that'll actually respond to different requests that you can initiate. So once you do that, you'll actually be able to call the localhost 3000 posts and then slash one for the ID and that's actually going to give you the object itself. So this is perfect for front end mocking and things of that nature. In those instances where the backend is missing or the backend is still being developed by another team, this like I said is perfect for testing or mocking. So this is exactly what we're gonna use. And I'm actually going to install this package over here. So I'll stop the server and then I'll do yarn add. And this is going to be a dev dependency JSON server. And once that finishes, what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to create a file. It's going to be store JSON. And this JSON file will basically include the information about the writer. So this will be the initial data set for the application. So what I'll do is I'll create an object that will contain an entry for the writers. This is going to be an array. And then inside of that array, we're basically going to create several objects for the initial data set. So every writer will have an ID. So this could be a numeric ID, something like one, two, or three, whatever. Or because we'll be using pretty URLs, which is basically what most websites use, most blogs. We could simply just take the name of the writer. So for example, Alan Watts, right? We could take the name of the writer and then convert it to lowercase and then add dashes in between instead of spaces. So the ID could look something like this, assuming that the name would be Alan Watts, right? So I'll keep it as an empty string for now. And like I said, we'll also have a name of the writer. Then we're also going to have a property that refers to the date on which the writer was born. And then we'll have one for deceased, like that, if that's applicable. Then we'll also have a simple short description about the writer. And then we'll also have a property that refers to the URL of the image or basically the portrait for that writer. Now I'll go ahead and copy that a few times. So I'll create a few objects here. So I'll have five of them. Right, so I went ahead and filled up those objects with some of my favorite writers. So we've got Ralph Waldo Emerson here, we've got Friedrich Nietzsche, we've got Carl Jung, we've got Joseph Campbell, and finally Rajneesh or Osho. So very different writers as you can see here and they, wrote, and they all wrote on different topics. But I think this should be enough for the initial data set. So I'll go ahead and save the store file. And now if we go back to the uh, terminal over here, what we can actually do is we can actually spin up the uh, JSON server at this point. So let's do node modules bin and let's call JSON server. So if you go back to the documentation, the one thing I'll mention though is they do recommend to install JSON server as a global dependency. But the only problem with that is that if somebody actually installs this project and they would like to run the application locally and then play with the fake JSON server that's included by the package, they would need to go ahead and install the server themselves. So they would actually need to go to the terminal and initiate this command. What I'd like to do them instead is just to simply run yarn install, which would basically install all the dependencies. And this is exactly the reason why I added the JSON server as a dev dependency, because this will not go to production, of course. And so the only caveat here is that they can't actually run a JSON server like that, because if you try to, so let's try JSON server, that's just basically not going to be able to find the command. But if you do go to node modules, like I said, node modules, to dot bin, and then you call JSON server on that, now going back to the documentation here, you need to provide the watch property. So let's do exactly that. So dash dash watch will point to store JSON file. And then finally, because we're going to be running our application, a React application on port 3000, if you go back to the app right there, 3000, the default port for JSON server is also 3000. So we need to provide a port over here. So let's do 3004. And let's start the server. So now let me actually expand the terminal over here and let me go ahead and open another one. So what we can actually do at this point is we can actually start making requests to that server because it's already running in the background. So let me do crawl to a local host port 3000, uh, 3004 actually. And let me go ahead and include the writers right there at the end of the URL. And as you can see here, we get the list of all the writers as defined in the store itself. And the cool point is, let's say if I wanted to go back and delete one of them, so we have five, if I delete one, now we're gonna have four. Because the server is running in the background, it's actually being updated as the file is being updated as well. So if I initiate another request to writers, so you're gonna see we're gonna have four objects. 
I'm actually gonna go back and bring back Osho over here because I'd like to have five. Now back in a terminal, the other thing we could do is we can actually call the individual writers themselves by providing the ID. And of course, if you provide something that's gibberish, so for example, something, of course that's not gonna be able to find anything, so you'll just get an empty JSON. But the other cool thing is that we can also not only initiate get request, but also post. So let me include a header here. So this is going to be content type application JSON. So I'd like to create a new writer here. So we're gonna initiate a post request. And the data set would be a simple JSON here. So I'm gonna include name, let's say Alan Watts, okay. And I also provide the ID for now. So the ID would be Alan Watts, okay, like that. And then this would need to go to localhost 3004, writers like that. And it looks like I made a typo, it's localhost with an L. But if you do that, that's basically going to create a new entry in the file. So this will actually write to the file in the file system itself. And apart from those, you could also initiate put requests, as you might imagine. So let's have a put request instead of Alan Watts. Let's say we'll keep the same ID, but I wanted to type something else. And then this would go to writers slash Alan Watts, like that. And this will change the name of that writer. So if you go back, the changes will also take effect in the file itself. And then finally, we can also initiate a delete request. In fact, what I'm gonna do here is I'll make a delete request to localhost. This will be port 3004 writers and let's delete Alan Watts because we no longer want to have it. So once you do that, you get a set of empty curly braces and then you go back to the file. And as you can see here, the writer gets deleted. So this is an awesome package and this will allow us to play with a store over here.